Hello there commanders and welcome back to National Cup. We are in the playoff stage, first semi-final between Russia and China. It is a best of three and the first match is going to take place on Marathon. It is most likely the Chinese map of choice as the Chinese have taken that map against Sun Tzu as well uh, during uh, the War Games Institute tournament. Now they're going to face off against Russia on that map and it is also a 10 v 10 battle not 8 v 8 anymore so the group stage was 8 v 8 and then suddenly the organizers decided well let's make it a 10 v 10 for some reason um well let's say i'm not going to question that and let's see what both teams are bringing uh russians they have one player of cavalry two players of ranged um some dogs and the rest is standard infantry only one unit of pikes uh, the Chinese, they have brought triple pikes, triple cavalry, also double ranged, and also triple dogs. So more or less, very, very similar compositions. Let's see, cavalry roaming around there in the middle, trying to scout out what the other team is going to do about C. Uh, Russians are quite heavily committing here to the top of the hill, a bit more than the Chinese. And uh, Russians and Chinese also more or less in equal force down here in the forest, the beach side. This cavalry is trying to flank around, maybe try to get on top of the archers, maybe try to deny the healing zone or pick up any units that are trying to retreat, or maybe just charge in the back and apply that reflank and war cry combo that is also powerful. As far as an equal exchange in the front lines, both teams going at it using all their damaging abilities, but it seems like the Russian damaging abilities are just ever so slightly stronger. Well, let's see what's happening on the other flank. China is pushing back the Russians with uh, their pikes. The Russians are trying to go around ever so slightly, trying to pursue away those pesky repeating crossbows that keep nagging them, and they're looking to use their own repeating crossbows to quickly remove uh, the pike threat here from the front lines. We need to remember that China is so far the only team in the tournament that has managed to defeat Russia so far. So, even though the Russia got the first place, they have arguably gotten a worse opponent. They are a little bit worsely, um, if that's a word, match against. And just worse. Um, okay, well, the Russians are slowly winning here the engagement in the forest, but Chinese obviously going to run back into the healing zone. Russians do have cavalry over there to prevent them from healing. So, if they can keep the push uh, happening and get the, uh, uh, keep the knight in the healing zone, China is going to lose E and so far it looks like they are going to succeed. Let's look if the China can really respond here. Doesn't look like it. The Russia has managed to snack one of the units on top of D, already started contesting it. They also have quite a number of advantages. They have managed to win an engagement here in the forest. So they are just simply winning all over the place. See, they're also now asked the, uh, the, uh, sorry, after they have pushed the Chinese forces away from the hill. Me trying to change the sentence in the middle of the sentence is not really a good idea and then it results in such shenanigans and me sounding like uh, Jim Carrey in one of, their, uh, one of his comedies. But anyway, and now the Russians, after winning the hill, they're also uh, pushing down towards C. They're rather giving up on D, they're just content with D being contested. Can they maybe flank? Yep. Two flanks applied, but it's not enough, only two side flanks. Not bar barbarians, so the unit is going to hold on. He also has uh, hold a line available, so it's not going down, but E is going to go down. The Russians can actually just push into the Chinese base if they so desire. C is going to be captured. Well, the Chinese cavalry can charge in an oath in there. Or just walk in and an oath. It is being silenced though by Vichy, so no oath possible either. And now it's getting ragged by repeating crossbows. Very nicely done. And it's going to even be routed. The Vichy is still going on. Very powerful there by Caesar Cavalry. Completely disallowing uh, the use of, of Perseverance. And C is going to go for the Russians as well. Six points per second already. Four minutes into the battle. And let's see what the Russians are now up to. Are they going to pressure D? Uh, they could, but now first they are going to heal up from C. Some of them are already going forward, grabbing at watchtower, seeing what the Chinese are up to. And the Chinese team has mostly respawned over here at base, which is telling me they are trying to get E back as the trip from base to D. It's much closer than from base to D. And also D is still under their control. And they do have six units over there able to defend that. So, the Russians are also healing up over at E after winning the fight, and they are 
preparing to meet the Chinese here in the open field. Both teams will have a roughly equal uh, distance to their healing zones, uh, but it is the Chinese that are being put under the wall under pressure of needing to get some of the points back as they have lost already two uh, points. Well, C has been neutral, so no, didn't really lose that, but the Russians are obviously quite far ahead. So we're going to meet the Chinese here ahead of the point, not allowing them to contest. Orangians from China are going to do absolutely nothing really. The repeating crossbows can put up a little bit more damage, so they are going to help with the frontline engagements as the archers are really struggling to find anything. They will need to find some dogs, maybe. But the dogs, unlucky for them, are quite far away. As the Russians just come in from uh, with holding the Chinese a little bit far away here. But they're slowly running out of melee units and the Chinese are going to find their way on top of E. The Russians are now trying to pull back as they're trying to uh, get E contested and that makes them suffer quite a lot of damage. So China should be able to get E back sooner or later. The healing zone will be denied, so yeah, I really see Ru um, Russia losing E. China should get back, but Russia is committing much, much larger force. They don't care about E anymore, they care about D. The uh, Chinese team does have pikes over here, now in fine shade. Can they get in front in time? It's going to be pike versus pike over here. Let's see. Vichy being used. Pike knows this, Phalanx Thrust. There we go. So this unit is Vichy, even at the cost of 25 distance. They don't give a fight, they're just pulling through their own phalanx. They are suffering a little bit of friendly fire because of that, because they don't really pulling through at a perfect angle, although those, those pikemen just tangled around. But the enemy pikes are going to go down very, very quickly. They also have dogs, but the dogs are not being sent yet. They have recalled them now, they can send them in onto the phalanx now. But they get trolled and the dogs are going after that one unit that is almost, almost dead. Now they should go after the main pikes here in the front line. But those spikes are buying the Chinese team quite a lot of time and they are using the time to get E back under their control as the Russians are being slowly, slowly pushed out of there. Uh, the Russians, uh, Russian archers are there, but now they are being approached by repeating crossbows. Why are the archers of the Chinese team still quite far away in the forest? It's quite a mismatch because now the archers will be able to use uh, the range advantage to their advantage. They also have one XP advantage over one of the units. But they suffer, that is going to suffer a little tiny bit of damage, not that big of a deal. And now the cavalry is going to find a charge onto the archers, as not the Bioric, so crippling shot not available. But he's going to split up so that he suffers only one unit of losses. But he's still being pursued by other uh, ranged units of the Chinese team. Uh, that has also now died over there at D. He's going to lose D. So the Russians have traded E for D. So that doesn't really change much. Russia is still going to be four points to one ahead. And convincingly, so not even slowly but surely, but quite fastly, um, sprinting towards victory. As D is going to be contested by the pines that have unrouted. There we go. Now they have died. Now they're gone. D is going to be flipped and captured now any time soon. China is rushing towards B. Uh, Russia is going to respond to that with five units of their own. So five versus five but the Russian units are fully healed up. They also all have rank one and only two of the units of the Chinese team are rank one and they're also damaged. Cavalry reinforcements are coming for uh, Russians as well, but China is sending some of the infantry reinforcements towards there. Problem is that they didn't heal. They are definitely put under the pressure. They need to act fast. That's why they're not going to heal. They're going to push forward, but Russia do realize what's going on. They are responding in time, and even though the Chinese wanted to get that time, like, just cut it in half by not having to go back to heal, well, they simply are not going to have enough power to punch through the Russian defense and get B. They do have it contested, so that slows down the Russians um, point gain ever so slightly, from 6.0 to only 4.5. And let's see if the Russians can start contesting E. Doesn't look like it as the Chinese concentration of forces is quite high in the area. Russians are still healing up over D and slowly descending down the mountains towards the Chinese front lines that control the forest. Well, the Russians also do have their forces in the forest. They have defeated uh, this, uh, the two units attempting to contest B. Now they have pushed them out. They are going to use the cavalry to delay the handlers, but the handlers are just going to release the dogs and stop the cavalry that way to be able to run away and heal up over at E. 
as the Russians are closing in from all sides onto the Chinese team that is trying to do something but it's very very struggling to do so the Russians are just not letting the pressure up and as I said multiple times once you capture a point it is very difficult for the other team to get it back unless they uh, have overwhelming advantage but if you have that overwhelming advantage like the Chinese team had over on E well the other team can have overwhelming advantage on the other side and just trade you one point for one which is what the Russians did and well thanks to winning their engagements on both flanks at the very beginning they did find themselves in a huge position of advantage now that the Chinese team is struggling to get out of and break uh, that status quo that the Russians have established at the very beginning of the match. Very nice charge over here into the Chinese archers by the Russians as they will get E contested and now they will get pushed out but it'll soon get contested. There we go. Now zero points per second gained by the Chinese. The Russians still six points per second with less than 1000 points left for them to complete uh, the victory and well set themselves for 1 and 0 in this match on the Chinese map of choice. We'll see what the Russians will pick for the next battle but uh, still they need to complete this uh, victory. It will prevent Chinese flanking at times that are trying to flank it to relieve the pressure. Russians will have none of it and they will keep pouring in their melee on top of E. Range units and uh, having the well, having the repeating crossbows inside thanks to that watchtower they will be able to delete those repeating crossbows and force them back even further so Chinese are not going to be able to get anywhere close to D and the Russians are going to pour into E now it's all only a fight for them to establish an absolute dominance over the Chinese team and capture E and win uh, the battle once having all five points under the control only two units, uh, two melee units left for the Chinese team inside E. But one of them is holding very, very strong. Can be flanked and routed though. So we'll see if that is going to happen. But the Chinese managed to find some reinforcements inside E. Can the Russia deny the healing zone? Do have cover in the area, but it's being stopped by uh, Chinese cavalry as well. But as the cover, Chinese cavalry is pulling back, that allows the Russian cavalry to maybe get in. Now they are charging into the healing zone, but the charge is intercepted by itself because the further half of the unit was charging forward and as it and well as the <laughs> further back of the unit didn't charge forward then the center of the unit got teleported back and the charge has been stopped literally by itself so there we go uh, unit coherency memes here in the semi-finals of the national cap providing some entertainment as we already know who is going to win. That has been decided at the very, very beginning of the battle. It is Russia to the surprise of no one after that initial engagement. And they are going to score a convincing 13 minute victory over China. Just any second now. They will not get E, so there is a little bit honor left there for China that the Russians didn't completely dominate them. They didn't capture all the points. But nonetheless, Russia is looking very, very strong as such just league above, together with the Ukrainian team, just league above all the other teams. Well, as they head into the second battle of the semi-final uh, this Sunday, I'll see you there. In the meantime, you can help us bring the war back to the West. And until then, I'll see you on Arena's Battlefields, Commanders.